Thank you very much. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, thanks uh, Analytics Vidya for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Great, thanks very much. All right, guys, you know, uh, without uh, no, uh, delaying, let me start today's session. So basically we are here, uh, this is uh, a one hour session. Let's try to use this one hour session effectively. So I'm gonna talk about the classification using Azure ML. Uh, prerequisite is you should be knowing Python, which is very important and some of the basics of machine learning here. And most specifically, I've chosen a field of machine learning called classification. All right. Uh, so let's get started with this session, guys. So agenda is something like this. So we will see what is a Azure ML and introduction to classification in ML and setting up the Azure ML workspace and execution of Azure ML model. All right. So we'll see one by one. And coming to this uh, Azure ML, so many are really curious about, you know, the different cloud technologies being used in this industry, right? So we use uh, AWS, we use Azure ML, we use uh, Google Cloud uh, ML capabilities, right? So basically it depends on the industry guys. However, like, you know, Azure certifications and AWS are on the top. If you could notice here, uh, I have clearly written that it is basically a cloud service for accelerating and managing the machine learning project lifecycle, right? So we can also run a machine learning model on our computer systems. But uh, the question is, do we have uh, enough uh, computational power to execute all these uh, models, predictive models? So that is the reason uh, we uh, basically migrate towards the cloud technologies like Azure ML. And using this Azure ML, we can easily maintain the entire life cycle of a machine learning model. Whenever I say entire life cycle, basically you start, uh, you know, building a model and then you start deploying the model and you start giving services to your clients, right? So nowadays, Azure machine learning is being used by many professionals. Okay, it has got many services, not only ML services, uh, many data engineering pipelines. You can build many ETL tools. Okay. And then, you know, uh, it can be used by many data scientists, engineers, and can use it in your day-to-day workflows train and deploy models and manage ML ops, which is again, one of the trending thing what we see here. So ML ops is basically machine learning and operations. If you have heard about DevOps, ML ops comes from DevOps basically. So how you're going to manage your machine learning models in the production. That's what uh, we deal in uh, ML ops. So this is again a very vast concept. All right, any of, so that's, uh, one thing that everybody should uh, know that MLOps is also one of the trending thing that everybody are uh, learning nowadays uh, to uh, incorporate in their industry projects. And also guys, uh, if you are aware of some of the Python and machine learning packages, we use uh, Py PyTorch, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, they're all used to build some of the machine learning models. We can use the Scikit-Learn to build some conventional or classic machine learning model. We can also use the TensorFlow or PyTorch to build this deep learning models, right? And also some of the MLOps tools. Uh, if you have heard about uh, tools like MLflow, Apache Airflow, right? So they're all basically used to, you know, build some uh, uh, MLOps tools uh, in the production. And you try to monitor and retrain and re redeploy the model as and when the data is uh, basically coming, right? So we have different uh, training mechanisms uh, that can be achieved using MLOps. So normally guys, uh, there are many questions in the chat box like AWS is better, Azure ML is better. So if you notice here in most of the you know, cloud technologies, uh, the things remains same, okay? So here we call it as a containers, there we call it as a buckets or S3 bucket, okay? Uh, nothing but uh, kind of storage containers, right? So uh, in other words, uh, it means that basically, it doesn't mean that it is always Azure stands first or uh, Amazon ML stand first or Google Cloud stand first. So every service providers that are running their own advantages here, right? It all depends on the team. Uh, and then uh, probably uh, when it comes to the security purposes, we 
people tend to rely on the Amazon ML, uh, sorry, Azure ML services. That's one thing. However, it all depends on the team, I would say here, yeah. right? Uh, that's what uh, many industries are uh, looking for, and probably they are making a kind of transition to cloud services here. Now, uh, just to uh, go ahead. So what is that Azure ML? Just to continue our uh, discussion, if you notice here, right from preparation of the data, right from building a model using uh, one of the uh, one of your favorite you know, IDEs, let's say uh, we have Jupyter Notebooks. You know, uh, Basically, as a data scientist, we use Jupyter Notebooks to build some machine learning models, right? Because it is interactive. Uh, so we can execute some code and we can see the result there and there itself. It's so simple and interactive and we can perform lots of visualization, some kind of experimentation basically, right? So we tend to use the Jupyter Notebooks a lot. So we, we can actually find this Jupyter Notebooks on Azure ML. That is one thing. And also Visual Studio Code, which is also one of the tools being used by many developers um, across the world. And uh, we have these options in our Azure ML, okay? And then um, we can certainly use these uh, tools to build uh, an effective model. And once you have these tools, we also have uh, some of the mechanisms to train and test your model. Okay. And once you're done with the training and testing your model, we have a, a steps called registering your model and manage your model. Let's say that you're building, you're working on a particular data problem. You would come up with uh, multiple models. We want to see the different versions of the models. So when we do this, we try to register the models and then we try to manage our models in our repository, right? That's what we usually see in this uh, registration steps. This is basically called as a model registry. And once we're done with that, we are ready to go with the deployment. Okay, whenever I say deployment, so pushing your model onto the production. So we try to create some kind of image of a model, exact copy of a model, and we try to just install the dependencies. So whenever you build an application, we uh, have many requirements. Let's say that you're using a specific scikit-learn version, you're using specific TensorFlow version, uh, you're using a particular uh, SDK versions. We try to keep uh, requirement files and based on the requirement files, we try to you know, uh, build an image of your model with all the dependencies. And finally, we try to deploy the model as a web service and eventually we try to monitor the model uh, to check its performance when it goes to the production, right? So just to uh, you know, summarize the things, guys, you should always remember there are two things in this case, okay? One is like, you are basically you know, working in two um, environment. Uh, basically, it is a experiment phase and then the deployment phase. So normally as a data scientist, we uh, work in an experiment phase. We try to experiment a lot with the data. We do a lot of feature engineering, feature selection. And then when we are done with uh, you know, getting an optimized model, the final model, we tend to deploy the model. So this is basically when it goes to the production, we take the help of DevOps engineer. We should be knowing the concept of MLOps. And, and see how basically the model works when it goes to the production. There are a lot of things which are present in this uh, deployment phase. However, as a data, data scientist, we tend to spend a lot of uh, time in preparing and then experimenting. And probably data scientists nowadays should also know how we can deploy our model effectively using some of the deployment uh, strategies, right? So you should be knowing that you work in experiment and then deployment phase. And uh, once you go from preparing to deployment, you see a lot of technologies and a lot of tools uh, present in the entire life cycle of a machine learning workflow. All right. So now, uh, basically, guys, we are going to use these tools and we try to build a machine learning model. Firstly, I would like to you know talk about the classification. So any answers, what do you mean by classification? I also heard that there are some freshers in the session. What do you mean by classifications? How uh, basically classification works? It's nothing but a categorization, right? Uh, so what usually happens, guys? You have a data and you want to perform some classification. Let's say that you want to predict whether a person is canceric or non-canceric, whether a person is diabetic or non-diabetic, 
whether a person will have a heart disease or will not have a heart disease nothing but malign and benign tumors in our brains okay we basically use you know some categorical columns to predict something right that's what we do it using classification so in this uh, session i'm going to build a classification a simple classification model called logistic regression okay so what i will do now uh, for another 10 minutes i'll talk about logistic regression and once we're done with that i straight away dive into the practical aspects of azure machine learning all right let me quickly share um, something about logistic regression just to brush up ourselves guys let me start from the slide so we all know classification is a supervised learning task whenever i say supervised learning what does it mean guys you have input you also have the output you have input you also have the output so typically guys classification uh, under classification you can find lot of algorithms the algorithm that we are going to discuss right now uh, it is called as a logistic regression okay i just wanted to brief about logistic regression so it's a classification thing what we have okay and then you know you tend to perform or you either classify a particular uh, input as a true or false binary classification spam or am classification a person will buy or will not buy a particular product typically you tend to perform binary or maybe the multi class classification anything is fine for us if you notice this particular picture over here this is something what you refer it as uh, a sigmoid uh, curve right so as we know that this logistic regression is based on the linear regression right so now let's say i want to solve a particular problem if the problem is like probability of getting infected given the age so we have given a set of age and you want to find the probability okay of infection cool guys you know that's what we try to do and we try to you know classify an input as either true or false okay uh, spam or ham kind of examples what we see right and typically uh, we basically try to come up with a you know sigmoid curve over here that's what we do it and always the sigmoid curve varies between 0 and 1 and we always tend to find the probability if the probability goes above 0.5 we try to classify it as 1 if it goes below 0.5 uh it is classified as zero if you notice here we have given a set of age okay for this age we are trying to predict the probability right so assume that if the age is given like 50 or 60 then we try to classify it as one and then if it is like below 40 we try to classify it as zero so it's a typical binary classification problem and all you can see it's uh, the derivation of it okay it's basically a derivation of this entire logistic regression so i would uh, go to the final equation if you all could remember if you have a fundamental like basically we try to use an equation called sigmoid equation p of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus exponent of minus beta not plus beta 1 to x so this is equation we use to perform the classification this is something we refer to as sigmoid equation guys all right so uh, now uh, we also have some of the metrics like recall precision accuracy fn score and we want to see how well we have classified a data point so for that we are going to use some of the formulas of accuracy here uh, we have accuracy formulas like uh, true positive plus true negative by true positive plus true negative plus false negative plus false positive nothing but correct predictions divided by total number of predictions right and we also have the precisions tp by tp plus uh, fp fp stands for false positives right and we also have the recall here so true positives by true positives plus false negatives so keeping this in mind we also have an f measure or f score which is a kind of like harmonic mean 2 into precision into recall divided by precision plus recall so um so i presume that you all aware of this logistic regression okay so we try to use this algorithm in our uh, azure machine learning experiment and then um, we try to build a, a very simple model guys okay cool so now uh, what i would uh, request you all of you to just go to the google okay and then 
you need to basically subscribe. Subscribe to Azure. So let's say that I would go to the Azure website, azure.microsoft.com. Okay. And you can also notice here, there is a free account option. Okay, so the steps I'm showing right now uh, will help us to create an Azure account, Azure free account for learning purposes. Keep this in mind. I'm gonna use this one. So if you have a free account here, let's try to use this um, particular free account, click on this. And all you see, it's like, you have two options like start free and pay as you go, right? So you can click on the start free button. So you have a one month free subscription, guys. It will not be charged. Only thing is that you'll have to enter your credit card details. Okay. You'll have to enter all the you know credentials, your password. Okay. And uh, you'll have to sign up with this website. So once you're done with that, so you'll be taken to, uh, you can sign into the Azure ML and you can always say, uh, ML Azure. Okay. Let's, let's go to this one. So let me try to reload this. So I'm going to reload this to portal.azure.com. I'm going to share this one, share this entire link with you. Let me go to home here and, uh, you can probably bookmark this, uh, particular link. Okay. So you can notice here, so I've left out with like 14,499.99 credit remaining. So this is a kind of free subscriptions what I've made. It's a kind of free trial. Uh, probably once you are done with this, uh, it will ask you to upgrade to pay as you go subscriptions. There is a pay as you go subscriptions over here, right? So guys, you know, there are certain things that we need to uh, do it here, okay? So if I go to this you know, Azure portal.azure.com, you can see different options here. So it provides different services, right? Uh, you have options like all resources, resource groups, and then some SQL DBs. It supports a lot of databases and you have Azure Active Directories. There are different services provided by Azure uh, in this case. Now, what we can do, we are uh, very much interested in understanding the Azure ML, isn't it? So what we can do is that we can click on the plus button over here. Okay, so there is a plus button, create a resource. So once you click on this create a resource button, so you would see that there are different uh, tools being shown here. Like we have SQL databases and then we have uh, some Windows Server, uh, data center, web app creations and data factory. If you are running any data pipelines, you have logic app okay you have different you know uh, applications running on the cloud so what we are interested in is we are very much interested in this ai plus machine learning so that's our uh, interest right now so probably what you can do you can go here and then simply search azure okay machine learning okay you can search with the keyword azure machine learning so once you search azure machine learning so you can go to this website, uh, this link, and all you can see is that Azure Machine Learning Services. So once you uh, go to this page, you can create a particular resource here. What is that resource? Azure Machine Learning. So I'm already done with the steps here. Okay. Creation of the Azure Machine Learning Resource. However, I would like to show it uh, again. So I click on this create option over here. Once you click on this create option, see since mine is like the free trial, you can see the free trial option, okay? So that remains as it is. And normally what happens, let me go here and see, show you uh, what basically I'm trying to do it now. We have a resource group, we have workspace details like workspace name, region, storage account, key vault, application insight, etc., and content registry. There are different fields over here. If I go to this, you know, uh, slide, you can notice here. So we're going to build this ML model on scikit-learn, train a classification model. We try to run some ML experiments and log the metrics. So register fully trained model with Azure ML. And there are certain things what I've written here, which is optional. 
So let me go to this slide, guys. Steps to set up your Azure workspace. If you notice in this case, you have Microsoft Azure account. Assume that you have a Microsoft Azure account. And now you have that subscription now, the free subscription itself. And after that, we are supposed to create a research group. You can see the hierarchy here, guys. We can create a research group. Okay. So once we create a research group, we can actually put all our products, uh, projects into that research group. So here we have a research group in this case. And within that, we are supposed to create a workspace. This is super important. So whenever I say workspace, you have different options within the workspace. Let's say you have compute options, you have notebooks and pipelines to run. Okay. And then you have data and then experiments and model. Right. So all these options are basically present in the uh, workspace. So I would take up all of the questions at the end, guys. Okay. So we have the workspace here and then Compute is nothing but some virtual missions. We can use the CPUs and GPUs to run your Azure machine learning models. We can also run some notebooks. We can also run some pipeline, end-to-end -end pipeline, right from data preparation to data visualization and deployment. We can run some pipelines. We can actually label the data. Okay. And then we can also run some experiments. Experiments are nothing but some jobs. Basically, when you try to use this uh, cloud services, and when we run this uh, ML algorithms, we call it as an experiment, or in other words, it is also called as a job. And finally, we have a models here. And certain things we need to set it up here. That's like storage account. One must have a storage account within this workspace. And we have an application inside that maintains some kind of state about your application running. And key vault, key vault basically means some of the secret keys we maintain. And we also have uh, the containers and registry. So where we can store our final model. Okay, we try to go with this flow. We have Azure account and subscriptions, resource group within that we have a workspace. So now all I do is that I follow this uh, step and then you can notice here that certain things you'll have to do it. You can actually give a new name here. Okay, so I've already created one resource group. So resource group name is like my resource group. Uh, however, you can also create your own resource group, let's say, uh, I'm going to call this as test resource group, something like that. Okay, you can click on OK here. And then you have some workspace name. Let me call this as ML workspace. Okay, so soon after you uh, enter the details here, you also have a region in this section. Like you can select the nearest region. I have selected East Asia. And you can also see some of the other fields are getting populated automatically, getting filled automatically. So you can keep them default, okay? And you'll have to click on a button called review plus create, okay? If you click on the review plus uh, create button, so you'll be able to create a, a new resource group, guys. All right, so these are the initial steps we often do. So once we have this details, so we'll try to just click on the create button. So we say that the validation is passed and then we can click on the create button. And once we click on the create button, so you can see the initialization of deployment here. Okay, so submitting the deployment, it will take uh, some minute and it will try to create a resource group for us. So carefully observe this one. We have certain things here. The deployment is basically Microsoft dot machine learning. And the start date is or start time is this one. And we have some kind of ID here. We have some sub uh, free trial, and then we have a resource group. So the one which I've created is like test resource group. There is a spelling mistake, excuse me for that. Uh, and then you can notice here, it's still deploying is in progress. Deployment is in progress. We need to wait for another few seconds so that it will get created, right? So the thing is, uh, if I go to the slide here, so what I did is that, so I basically followed these steps and right now we are inside uh, the resource group. We are trying to create the resource group. Once we create the resource group, I think we are good to go with the creation of the notebooks or computer, whatever it is, right? So remember guys, so these are the fields what we tried filling, okay? Subscription, 
is free trial and resource group, create or select a resource group. If it is already exist, you can actually select the existing one or you can create your own. The workspace name, nothing but uh, where you start your project and the region, the storage account, key vault, application insight, and then some container registry information. So these things are filled by default, need not to worry about it. So I go back here and then if you notice in this case, it says that your deployment is complete, right? So once the deployment is complete, all you can do is that you can click on this uh, go to resource uh, button over here. Okay. Uh, not exactly, uh, Yogesh. Okay. So not exactly. So content is different concept. We're creating resource group is concept. We can think about resource group as uh, a kind of uh, a group where we try to put all our projects. Okay. We try to maintain one directory kind of thing. Okay. Not exactly like container on Docker. So once we are done with that, we can click on this go to resource option over here. So if you notice here, all you can see is that you have a uh, different things, what you just created. You can click on this download config.json because when we want to run our machine learning models, okay, we try to download all the information. Let's say if I click on this download config.json file, okay, so you can get an information about your resource group and other things. All right. So let me just try to share that one which we have uh, downloaded. So if you can notice here, this is a JSON file what we have downloaded right now. Okay, nothing but a key when the value pair. Okay. So we can use this one and then try to um, build over any machine learning model. So let me go back. So just keep it ready. And once we have this one, you can see all the informations, resource group, uh, location, subscription, etc. We're ready now. What we can do now is that you can see that there are different uh, options on the left hand side as well. Okay. And also if you scroll it down, there is a launch studio button. Okay. There is a launch studio button. You can click on the launch studio button. If you launch the studio, you will get that ML studio interface. Now you have the different things in your workspace. You have a designer. Designer means what? You can actually drag and drop and build a machine learning model. So that is also possible. You have an automated ML where you already have an ML model. And then if you simply feed the data to the model, it will train automatically. And then you can get the inference from the model. This is something what we're as automated ML, automatically train and tune a model using a target metric. We also have a notebooks. Okay. So what we can do now, we can actually go and then try to look into the options present on the left-hand side. Like we have a notebooks, automated ML, designer, nothing but a kind of drag and drop option. We have a data, we have a jobs, nothing but experiments. We have different components, pipelines. There are so many things what you can see in the left-hand section, I guess. All I do is that I would click on this compute option. Okay. I click on this compute option. Once I click on this compute option, guys, you can see here, if I scroll it down, there is a new button. Okay. So I would like to click on the compute option because you know if you want to run a machine learning model, obviously we need a computational power, right? So we want to use some CPUs or GPUs, etc. Now what I do is that I click on this plus button so that I can create a compute machine. So we have a compute name. We can perhaps change this. Okay, so I would like to change this to some name. Uh, let's say this as ML compute. Okay. And remember here, valid characters are uppercase, lowercase. Okay. So now it is accepted. Some name I've given here, ML compute. And location is like East Asia. And you can also notice here, 
So we have a CPU and the GPU option. Okay, just like if you have uh, exposure to the Google uh, uh, notebooks, what we have, collaboratory, there also you have the CPU and the GPU options and TPU option, right? Similarly, we also have the GPUs, nothing but some virtual machines. All I do is that since I'm using a free trial version here, so it is automatically selected, and this is going to be like standard CPU virtual machine, what I'm using. And it's all about like two cores and 14 GB RAM and 28 GB storage. Let me use this. And then I probably, I you know, uh, continue this uh, with this particular uh, recommended options, but you can choose from other option as well, but definitely charged. So you can see that what is the amount being charged per hour? Okay. You would notice that there are different cores and then uh, the RAM and then the storage over here. All right. So I would go with the recommended options because I'm using a tree, I know, free versions here. Okay. So once you are done with that, so you can click on the create button here. Now we are basically configuring our compute missions. Now it starts creating, guys. If you notice here, we have a ML compute and it starts creating here. And what is the kind of uh, machine we are using? It's like standard ES11 version 2. And uh, this is basically assigned to Hemant Kumar, right? So it will take some time to create, basically. So let's wait for some time. And uh, once it is over, so you will definitely see the different tools option. So what I did right now is like, so I just went to this, you know, things like, Subscribe myself to the Azure Machine Learning. I created the research group searching Azure Machine Learning. So within that, you know, research group. So we tried creating the workspace. More specifically, right now I'm creating the compute machine here. Okay. So once it is created, the compute machine will have a different options like notebooks, Visual Studio, and uh, other different tools available. So I go ahead and use that and try to build a model. All right, so let me go back to this and uh, it's still creating guys. It would take some time to create. I think we need to wait for some time. However, so I've already created some compute uh, environment here. So we shall use that and proceed with our example. All right, cool. So let me go here and let me try to refresh this. I think we'll have to wait for another one minute. So I'll go to home now. Okay, let it get created. So once it is created, I'll definitely get a notification here. Okay. Now uh, I'll just go to this, you know, home. And you would also notice that, so basically in the ML compute resource group. So you can observe here. So if I go to this compute. Okay, so it's done now, guys. So it will take some time to create the compute environment. So all we have is like, a compute ml compute and we have the different applications running on the machine running on the virtual machine you have the jupyter lab jupyter vs code and terminal and notebook here so basically jupyter lab and jupyter jupyter notebook they are all same so if you click on this option you would open a jupyter lab and then this will ask you to upload some jupyter notebooks from your end and we have a vs code you may have to download the vs code and connect through the VS code, that is one thing. And we also have a terminal here. We also have a notebook. So let's say that I would like to click on this notebook here. So now we have a, a folder here. So users and uh, there is a folder here. So what I can do, I can actually create a notebook. So for that, I can click on this three dots and then click on this create new file option. And you can always give a name here. Let's say that I'm going to say sample dot IP1B. And we also know the extension of any notebook is like dot IP1B, right? So I click on the create button here. Okay. So once it is created, guys, you'll see a new notebook showing up. All right. So this is uh, the input cell, what we have. We can always try to just execute the things. Okay. Hello. Welcome. Okay, once you execute it, you'll be able to see the output here. So we are done with creation of a notebook now. So what I've done, 
So our intention is to actually focus on Azure machine learning using some algorithms. I followed all the steps, guys. Okay, I followed all the steps, and I have a notebook here. So basically, if you go in this case, I've created um, a different folders and then different experiments in this case. So I've created a folder called Azure Experiment. You can always go to this one, and there is a folder called Workshop. So this is for my reference, I've created it. And there is a file called class uh, example.ip1b. All right. So I'm going to use this. So before that, let me try to you know clear all the outputs here. So this notebook is created. And we also have the diabetes.csv. So for learning purpose, probably you can use the Azure data sets, which are already present. OK. So, and also I have written some, oh, you know, file like score.py. So now guys, you know, we have this file now. So certain things you'll have to, you know, basically import. We have a date time, we have NumPy, we have pandas, we have model selection, and we try to import the train test split class. And we also try to import some of the functions like accuracy score, recall, precision, FN score. As I told you, since this is a, uh, logistic regression or a classification problem, we are supposed to import all these functions. And we are trying to use a model called logistic regression model and try to create a pickle version of a model by using a job lib function here. Let me try to just import this. Okay. Then also try to import some of the Azure uh, APIs. Some functions, some classes are very important. I'm going to import Azure ML.core. And from Azure ML.core, I'm going to import the workspace here. Okay, because we want we want to connect uh, to the workspace what we have created, and we are also trying to import the model here, and we have an experiment. Experiment nothing but the machine learning algorithm we try to learn. And if you want to actually deploy the model, then we need to uh, import a class called Web Service from this particular family of Azure dot Core dot Web Service package. And if you want to really create a container image, a Docker container image, then we are supposed to import a class called Container Image over here. And also Azure container instances is very much required if you really want to deploy the model. And we have some of the dependencies because when you deploy the model, we are supposed to actually, you know, uh, create some dependency file, okay? And we should include the dependencies required in this particular Conda dependencies class, all right? So I'm gonna actually uh, execute this one. So I've written step by step and I go here and I check the Azure ML.core version. If you notice here, uh, the latest version, latest and the greatest one is like 1.44.0. And remember guys, these are like fundamental thing what we usually do in any projects. Now the point is that you will have to actually, you know, connect your application with the Azure workspace. Okay. So I would uh, answer all of your questions one by one guys. I would take your questions at the end for another five minutes. I will execute all this, you know, cells. Okay. And what we have right now, it's like creating a workspace. Remember, I had created the workspace using the interface. But now you can also use the SDK, Software Development Kit, to create a workspace. If you notice here, I'm going to use the subscription I have. And also I'm trying to create the workspace uh, programmatically. So I'm going to use this classification, name of the workspace, subscription ID, resource group, and then create a resource group, and then location, Southeast Asia, some location I'm using. Let me execute this one. Okay, it says error. It says, uh, no, it's throwing some, some error because, you know, so the workspace is already present. Let me try to just, you know, name the workspace classification two. Okay, so these things are very much required as an initial setup so that it will create a workspace for us. Yeah, so I think we are done with the creation of the Workspace, guys. Yeah, I think it's taking time. Otherwise, you can also go ahead and use the existing ones, even that is possible. Okay, so coming to all of your questions, Bijoy, basically, Epical file is a serialized version of your model, does not contain, uh, it's basically the trained model. You can, uh, you know, you can consider that, you know, Epical as a trained model. Okay, so being serialized. Okay, you can always uh, save it and load it anytime. Okay, and then Nuzhat, like, can uh, we use CNN in Azure ML? So obviously, uh, Nuzhat, like, we can use the you know CNN in Azure ML uh, because you know Azure ML also provides the deep learning 
algorithms. Okay, you can go to deep learning, deploying Azure ML on deep learning algorithms on Azure cloud. Even that is possible, right? So we are successful in creation of this particular uh, subscription. Yeah, I'm going to share everything with you guys. Don't worry. And once we're done with that, let me try to just, you know, we have a variable called uh, WS dot write config. And all we have is like, we try to write our configuration file. So this is basically the configuration file, what we have. So we are done with that. Now let's say, uh, once we are done with the workspace creations, we are supposed to create an experiment. If you notice here, the experiment class is being used here. This is a constructor. I'm going to pass a name for that experiment, nothing but a name for your algorithm, uh, machine learning model and call this as exp. Let me try to run this one. So what we're trying to do, we have a workspace. We are trying to connect our experiment with the workspace. That's why I'm trying to pass workspace is equal to WS. So your WS is nothing but this one. Okay. So once you're done with that, remember guys, when we run any machine learning models, we try to, okay. We basically try to log all the metrics. So what does it mean? Log all the metrics. We, we have different classification metrics like accuracy, recall, precisions, right? And then when we have started this experiment, when we have ended this experiment, everything should be logged. So that logging is done using the experiment dot start logging function. And I'm going to store that inside a run variable and try to just say run dot log experiment start time. And I'm going to use this string of date time dot date time dot now. Now I started this experiment. That's why uh, I'm trying to log the uh, experiment date and time. Okay. So once we're done with that, so we're going to read this particular uh, no, CSV file, so which I have inside this folder. Okay, so this is a file I'm going to read. Very simple file for learning purpose, guys. Uh, let me try to just you know go ahead and read this. And if you notice in this case, guys, all I do is that. So I'm going to remove this form, divide the data into X and Y, and check what you have inside X. We have a head of X. At a one year pregnancy, glucose, blood pressure, skin thickness, insulin, BMI. So basically, guys, what we're trying to do. So once we check this data dot head, all you notice is that you have the input, some of the inputs, pregnancy, glucose, blood pressure, skin thickness, insulin, BMI, and uh, age, pedigree function, the family history, and we have outcome like one and zero. So normally we can, and I use this data set, Okay, these are the inputs we have, and then this is the output what we get. This is a binary classification. Cool. So we have the data now. We have X and Y. We try to divide the data into four parts, as we know. I'm going to divide the data into two parts, uh, the train and test. I keep the test size as 20, and then train size as 80%. Okay. Try to just execute this one. So once we're done with that, we have a logistic regression model. So we try to fit the your 80% data, and we make some predictions on the testing part, 20% data. And then we have uh, the metrics like accuracy, we pass the true outcome and whatever we have predicted here, this is going to be the model predictions. And we also check the recall score, and we also check the precision score, we also check the FN score. Try to check that. So we have all this one. Let me try to see what is my model accuracy right now. So model accuracy. If I try to just print it out, so you would notice that it is giving me 76%. It means that 76 of my input is correctly classified, okay, uh, as diabetic or non-diabetic. Now, once we're done with that, guys, I think we are uh, good to go with this model, okay? Further, you can tune it uh, with some hyperparameters. So that is all like kind of advancement. Now, what I do, I try to just pickle this model. I try to call this model as a diabetes.pkl. PKL stands for it's a pickle model. Nothing but you try to serialize this model and store this model inside a folder called outputs. And let us try to call that variable as file name. And I'm going to use this job lib um, class and followed by the dump function and dump the LM model. LM model is nothing but logistic regression model. I'm going to pass this file name. So here in this case, we have this model being dumped. If you notice here, you have this particular model uh, in this output. Let me try to refresh this, guys. So we have this diabetes.pkl. So this is going to be the trained model what we have right now. Okay. 
So once we are done with that, I think we can load the model by using the same job lib uh, class and then the load function, pass the path of the model and try to pass your own data. So I'm gonna pass all the input here. So this is nothing but the number of times an woman is pregnant, uh, the glucose level, the insulin level, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We try to pass all the inputs and we try to just predict what's going to be your output. So it says that it belongs to class zero for this input. When I say class zero, it's nothing but it is non-diabetic. So the woman is like not a diabetic. Okay, probably you can change this value and see what is going to be the output here. All right, so this is going to be my output. However, in this case, I have some of the metrics that I'm trying to log. So I use this run dot log. I'm going to use this run class and then try to, you know, log all the metrics. This is a logistic regression. So I want to um, log the intercept, slope, accuracy, recall, everything here. Let me try to execute this one and try to store that inside uh, the outputs and the logs folder. Finally, guys, I'm going to say that uh, the experiment end time, we have ended the experiment. I'll also have uh, something like date time dot date time dot now and try to complete the experiment. Okay, so this will complete the experiment officially. And then what we have is like, once we're done with that experiment, we're going to use this run class and then there is a get portal URL function. Let me try to execute this one and see what is the URL get. This is basically the URL what you should see. Okay. Look into uh, if you want to see the output of your machine learning models. So if you click on that, then you can see the different things here. So we have different metrics here. So when you click on the metrics tab, you'll notice that the accuracy score, the experiment start time and the end time and the F1 score, many false negatives are there. And the intercept value you can also try to probably visualize in terms of a table. Okay. Now, once you're done with that, do we have any child jobs? We don't have any child jobs. We can also check the outputs plus locks. Okay. So if you notice here, so you will see that the pickle version of the model and same name for the temporary execution intermediate files, what we've created. You can also notice the code block. Okay. So you have the entire code here. Okay. And you can also see the explanation of the model basically. So all these things, I know uh, I'm not displaying anything. I'm not visualizing anything here. That's why I'm not getting anything over here, guys. So uh, the thing is like, you know, you can go to this link and always see what is the final result of your model. This is what you do as a, you know, uh, machine learning, you know, running a machine learning model in your Azure cloud. However, the next step is like, as I told you in the entire pipeline, if I go back to this slide, as I told you that we have different things here. So what I did right now, it's like only the experiment. Okay. However, you can also try to deploy the model. If you notice this, this is a deployment stage where you try to register and manage your model. Once you register and manage your model, then probably you try to create a Docker image and you try to deploy the model eventually as a web service, right? So for that, guys, the next step is like, I'm not going to execute it. However, I'm going to share this notebook with you all. You can probably execute this one and try to see how you can register your model. This is basically how you try to register your model in this case, right? So by using the some of the classes like resource configuration class from an API called Azure ML dot core dot resource configurations. You'll have to register the model by passing the workspace, by passing the model name, by giving a name to the model, and also setting the frameworks that we have used and version of a framework. And also make sure that you try to configure your resource, setting the CPU is equal to one. You're basically using the one core of a CPU and the memory is like 0.5. And you're trying to describe this model as logistic test model. We can actually register this model. Okay. So the model has been registered successfully, right? So if you go uh, to this one, so click on this models here, then you would see that. So the models, what you guys have registered. Okay. Uh, let me just look into your, you know, uh, queries guys. So is model inference the same as model testing or uh, does inference happen after deployment? So basically, uh, the joy, like we work in two phases. As I told you, one is like you work in a testing phase or a research phase. Okay. We try to do a lot of experimentations. We try to fine tune our models. Okay. Once the model has been fine tuned, then we go with the deployment phase. Okay. So you should make sure that uh, your model is uh, working exactly as same. Uh, as you were seeing in the experiment phase or in the research phase. Okay. So that, you know, uh, 
that is very important whenever you deploy the model. So basically, you try to conduct a lot of experiment and uh, during that you know uh, testing phase. And once you're done with that, we take the model to the deployment. Make sure that both the results are same during the deployment and while you carry out the experiment. Okay, this is very important. Uh, while you basically you know uh, build a model and try to deploy the model. Okay, so probably multi-tenant means uh, it's nothing but a cloud, multi-tenant cloud facility, Bijoy. So uh, Divya and Shagarwal, how do experiment and notebooks differ? So experiment, nothing but the running thing. Okay, let's say that you create compute and you have a different notebooks been running, different instances of notebook been running, and we call them as experiment here. Okay, so that is the thing what you should really understand. Guys, hello, right? hello Iman. Yes. Wait a bit. Yes. So guys, as the Q&A session is going on, we have another feedback poll here. So please also fill that because your poll will help us to conduct such more sessions in the future. Okay. And uh, yeah, also one more. Yeah, yeah. Also one more thing that whoever's questions are unanswered today, please uh, connect to Hemant on LinkedIn and ask all the questions there. He will surely be answering all your questions. Thank you. Hemant, over to you. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to share this you know, deck and then uh, the notebook with you all guys. That is one thing. Um, so creating resource group, is it similar to create container or Docker? No, it's not exactly similar. Probably we can relate it. Okay, so resource group is entirely different where you put all your projects into one group. Okay, so Docker container uh, on Docker is entirely different thing, Yogesh. So what exactly is deployment? So basically deployment is a very generic term what we normally use, okay? Deployment is nothing but uh, you try to load something, you try to put something into productions, okay? So you try to create compute and compute is, compute is basically getting ready. So that uh, getting ready uh, thing is basically called as the deployment in this case, okay? So can we use CNN in Azure ML? Of course you can use it. So you can go to like, uh, let me go to this deep learning certification guys, DP100. So this is the official page here. So you all can go to this exam DP100 and you would notice that uh, there is a different uh, path of learning here, creating machine learning models, exploration of data and then build and operate machine learning models. If you click on this uh, one, you can also notice that there are some uh, if you click on this one, you will also notice that you can also build some machine learning and deep learning models as well, right? So I think this, this particular path of DP100, so this is a certification exam that, you know, you will have to uh, get if you want to become a Azure data scientist. So I'm going to share this in your link. You can find this um, um, content on this particular page. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah, so Jupyter Notebooks is always having an advantage because it is like input and output, input and output. It is helping us to debug the code, okay, easily. Anonymous certainty, that's the point. Yeah, PK, PKL file, it's again like the train model, okay? So we can always integrate the ML model with any website, okay? Only thing is that you should be knowing some of the frameworks like Django frameworks, Flax framework, and fast API frameworks. There are so many frameworks available, you can always integrate with any websites you build. So uh, the law, basically you should look into the data set which comes under the domain, okay? So uh, let's say that you're working in electric network, then probably you need to look into that particular data and understand the domain and proceed with the model, whether the regression models are uh, good or the classification models are good, you need to decide upon that uh, based on the data you have. Okay, so it is good to have an internship so data science internship, okay. So you get many opportunities. Uh, Arendra, so here I'm going to share this one. So what you can do, if you notice here, so you can go to this compute section. You can also go to this, uh, uh, something like endpoints and you can see the model, that's the point. So here I could not actually deploy the model because of the time constraint. However, you can always uh, deploy the model, okay. So uh, in this Azure, uh, cloud, okay, so which is always possible. So I'm gonna share this particular notebook with you all. So probably you can you know, look into that and see the deployment code right after the model registry. 
Thank you all for patience and listen to me. So any doubts, you can always um, approach me and it. I know probably you can also approach analytics team. Definitely would like to answer your questions, guys. Uh, I think uh, uh, we tried covering uh, a lot in this one hour session. Uh, thanks very much. Okay. So any doubt, you can always get back to me. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you.